Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If any man who desire to come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Uh, the gospel that we heard this morning on this third Sunday of Lent, according to St. Mark, uh, helps guide us on this Lenten journey. Helps us to recognize and realize where it is that we are going and how we are getting there. Helps to understand more fully what it is that we seek, we who are followers of Christ. That we seek not glory, not wealth or power or fame or fortune, but rather that we would deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow Christ. This third Sunday in Lent is the middle of our great fast. It is the apex, the peak for us, and as such, it is important. We should recognize here in this third Sunday in this celebration of the Holy Cross, a certain respite, a certain rest, a certain joy that comes knowing that the great fast is half behind us, and that, as we'll hear next Sunday, our eyes will turn to Jerusalem. And yet, as we journey with Christ to Jerusalem this Lenten fast, we do so not just to remember and reflect on what Christ has accomplished for us, but also to help us participate in that which he has done for us and with us, that we might participate in his suffering, that we might also participate in his resurrection. So take up your cross and follow Christ. I was reading the newsletter that is soon to be printed, uh, late because of me, of course, uh, and yet I was reading one of our own, one of the articles in there, as I encourage you all to do, uh, and it was a reminder by one of even our altar servers here, uh, that it's not easy being Orthodox. It's not easy being Christian. Our lives are not ones in which we say, if we just believe in God enough, then we will have all of these things of the world that makes it so easy. We'll have enough money, we'll have enough house, enough cars, we'll have enough friends. None of this is the gospel. I'll tell you, as a financial advisor, it's not of the world either, really. You ask somebody who has a million dollars how much is enough, and they'll tell you it's five or ten. You ask somebody who has ten, and they'll tell you it's twenty or fifty. So it's not a reality in the world either. But especially in our Christian lives, we shouldn't think that if we just pray enough, if we just fast enough, then everything else will be easy. For God doesn't call us to follow Him to easiness. He calls us to follow Him to the cross. I was fortunate enough last week to be in California, in Southern California, and I had a, a morning off from work, uh, and so I took a taxi or an Uber ride down south of the city I was in. Uh, I took a little hike. And I tell you, when you get to the top of a great hike, you have beautiful views. So it's right on the coast, so I could see in one direction the Pacific Ocean, and then I could look behind me, and I could see a beautiful panorama of snow-capped mountain peaks. 
And it was a beautiful view, and well worth it, but it was a hard hike to the top. I was tired, I was thirsty, I hadn't really prepared, I hadn't brought any food. It was a hard hike to the top. Our Christian life is a hard hike. It's not easy. Rather, it is the way of Christ. And as we get to that peak, as we get to that cross, and as we take up the cross that Christ has given us, that we may follow Him, the view truly is beautiful. And so it is this Lenten journey that we've come to that peak to survey the wondrous cross, as a beautiful Protestant hymn says, that we might survey the wondrous cross of Christ, that we might also recognize the cross that he has given us, that in following him, we are given joy beyond understanding. That in following him and picking up the cross that he has given us, we might know also the resurrection that he has prepared for us. So let us buckle down these last few weeks of Lent. Let us recognize the cross that Christ has given to us and the joy that comes through that cross. For it is through the cross that joy has entered all the world. And so it is also through the crosses that Christ has given us to bear that joy also comes into our world. That we might participate, not just this Lenten season, but all of our lives. That we might participate in the cross of Christ, that we might also know and celebrate and participate in the resurrection and the new life that he has given to us. That together, we might all worship and glorify him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. <laughs>